Hey everybody, Rich here, South Florida beekeeping with Rich. Um, today we've got to figure out what's going on here. Hive number one is the hive that swarmed and made that big swarm up in the tree that we were trying to figure out. So the day after it swarmed, I went in and broke it down, see what was going on in there. And it was very interesting. The honey supers were almost full, but all but the three brood boxes here were almost completely backfilled with nectar and honey. There probably weren't more than a grand total of six dry frames of drawn comb where a queen could lay, and they were mostly in like a half a frame here and a half a frame there, and there was not a single bit of capped brood left in this whole thing as the as the brood hatched out they were packing away the honey there was no um uh drone cells being capped up so no laying workers and this is a phenomenon that happens from time to time and i thought to myself okay well i'm just going to put it back together i'm going to let them pack this whole thing full of honey and i'm just going to harvest all the honey and I'm going to put that wonderful swarm over there in this spot once we've done it. Only a few minutes later, as I'm finishing the stack on this, hive number two swarm. And the swarm went over to the bottom of the bucket there. They didn't go in the bucket, they were just bivouacking on the other underside of the bucket under the cedar tree. So. I looked at that, they were still coalescing on it, and I went, you know what, I'm gonna try something, because that's what I do with swarms, is I experiment. So I went in, and I grabbed a box full of foundation frames, brand new foundation frames, and they were waxed frames, but I melted a pot of wax, and I painted the heck out of them. I mean, I gave them a big coating of wax, and I set them here, because like I said, there was very little space for a queen to lay in all of this. So I gave them eight frames of well-waxed foundation, went over there to that bucket, lowered it, brought it over here, shook the swarm into there, put everything back together and I walked away and that was two weeks ago. Now, a couple of days ago, all of a sudden, all of the activity at the entrance here stopped. Had to wait for Saturday so that my supervisor could film this. But we're going to break this hive down and figure out what's going on now. I don't know what I'm going to find here. Are these going to be full or are these going to be empty up here? Uh, do I, is this going to be drawn out? Are they have just gone down in here? I don't know. This is a strange phenomenon that's happened here. I want to see whether dumping, you know, you hear about it from time to time. Somebody dumps a swarm into a queenless hive. Let's just find out where, oh, and I also want to mention that when I went through this whole box, I only found three queen cells. They weren't capped. They were well-drawn queen cups. And by well-drawn, I mean a little too long for a normal queen to be able to get in the bottom of it to lay an egg. And there were no eggs in them. There was no nothing going on but they were heavy, well-rounded edges. This isn't like, oh, a queen just came out of here. These weren't being torn down, quite the opposite. These had like reinforced edges. These were just queen cups, three of them, one frame, that was it. Uh, did not find active queen cells anywhere in here, which is why I shook it to swarm into here, see what happened. So let's get started, I'm just gonna I'm going to start by just taking off the two honey supers, and I've set up a table around the corner over there with a uh, bee escape on it. So I'm not going to spend, other than judging the weight of them, I'm not going to spend too much time on the honey supers. I'll let you know whether they're heavier or lighter than they were when I started this process. Well, despite the fact that we have nothing out front, we do have bees in here. Even though you have a feeder on there, that doesn't mean you were feeding them, correct? 
No, I just keep the feeder shim is just what I use as an inner cover all the time at this point. Okay. No. Now and I, I will. You have open entrances on both your supers as well. Uh, I opened the entrances. The bees closed them. Oh, they're propolis over. The bees completely sealed this one up, and there is exactly one bee. If you want to zoom in on this, it's a common enough uh, phenomenon down here. Oh yeah, look at that! Exactly, exactly one bee can one fit, bee space. and no bee fits in that. Nope. So you lit the smoker, but did you actually smoke them? Thank you, dear. <laughs> Just yes, doing actually, my job. Actually, I did come out before you got here, <laughs> and I smoked them from the bottom. But no, I, I should probably, you're right, smoke them as I go through up here. You know, if I don't need smoke, I don't, not all that, you know, I'm using it. Okay, well... These are a lot lighter than they were. Oh, so they're actually eating the honey out of them instead of packing the honey into them. Well, I kind of thought that might happen because, you know, I dropped a whole swarm on top of a bunch of empty frames. So. Oh, yeah, they got to eat something. They gotta, they're going to eat something. Maybe why they're not bothering to go out the front entrance. Why should they They have a whole smorgasbord right here? What I'm really curious about more than anything else is that box right there. Is that one lighter? It's got some nectar in it, but it's still fairly light, yeah. Yeah. Here's the queen excluder. I just want them out of the way. See anything? Not a lot. I don't see anything at all. Now you have to pull up some frames there. No. Might as well leave that one out so you can pull the other ones out, right? You don't need Give to. yourself some space. I'm looking. Yeah, nothing. I can look that way all the way to the end. I can look this way all the way to the end. There's nothing much going on. Nothing, huh? Huh. Okay. You said you put this box on two weeks ago? Yep. Yeah. Looks like there's a lot more going on here. Well, good. This is the top of our brood chamber. Do you oh, seems to be a wax moth uh, uh, cocoon that they uh, propolized. Got some got some activity now. Brood. You do. You have capped brood right there. Yeah. Uh -huh. I have a 
torn down queen cell there. I have what at first glance looks like a cap queen cell, as tiny as it is, but I'm sure it's probably not. Let's find out. Oh, yep, there was a queen in there. Hmm. That one's open. We've got larvae over here. About ready to be cat. Oh yeah, right there. Okay. Okay, so uh, well, it looks like the uh, hive is about to make a rebound. But it's not gonna give me any honey this year. Nope, they ate it all. Yeah. Plenty of nectar and uh, a fair amount of stores going in there. What's on the other side? Same thing? Oh, yeah. Okay. Making bee bread for the babies. Yeah. Not stores. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Underachievers much? <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. So here's a nice frame of what should just be nothing but honey and nectar, but we've got queen cells on the bottom. They're empty. Oh, yeah. Looks like they went through all their resources and they're starting to pack back in, but so where's the activity coming from? Because well, I've been out here plenty and watching this front entrance and I haven't seen much of anything going on. There's more fruit on this side. But it is a scattered pattern on this side. It's a very scattered pattern. Yeah. And look at all these queen cells everywhere. Yeah. Torn down queen cells. Yeah. So I would think they weren't happy with her. Yeah. Now we've got a little capped queen cell there. Are you going to leave it capped? Oh, look at this one. I tore this one open opening it because it was attached, cross attached. Yeah, so you might as well she take that off. Yeah, she wasn't far away. No. Okay, so the old queen in this in the uh, number There's two a, swarm. Is that one down there, Cap? Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, we need a queen. And I'm not sure well, what our you don't think is. we have one? I'm not sure what our status is at the moment. There we go. Hmm. Don't have enough bees to support a swarm right now, really. <laughs> oh, please. The tiny little swarms we've been getting? Yeah, I think they may think we, you think we don't have enough, but I bet you they do. This is a thing. Well, I'll we'll just tear them open. Oh, yeah, look. See, this is a queen cell, but you see how there's no real royal jelly there? Yeah, that's not going to be a successful That queen. wasn't going to be a viable queen huh. anyway. You might be best off just combining, like you said, a one of the swarms with this hive. But if you're going to do that, you are going to want to go through and get rid of all those cells. Okay. 
a little bear to do anything. She should be swimming. Yeah. They're making queens left and right, but they don't look like they're going to make good ones. Hmm. Lots of resources. All right, well, this one's heavy with nectar. Some capped honey. Resources are still there. No admittance, come on. Capped honey, nectar, and bee bread. Oh, yeah. Nectar and bee bread on that side. So did you think the queen was in this box? No, not recently. Okay. So we've got two frames with scattered brood. Plenty of resources. The next box. And the sun just came out. Yep. We have some big fluffy clouds up there. We'll go back down before long. Just like before. Not a whole lot going on there. Just, just nectar. Yeah. All three of these boxes look about like this two weeks well, ago. But it looks like most of what they were doing, they were doing in that box. I've been told bees like to go up. Yeah, I've been told bees like to go down. It's a, kind of like the theory of relativity. They kind of got to kind of get a unified theory there. Like, okay, in nature, bees go into a cavity, go to the top of it, and work their way down. And in beekeeping, now look at that. Two perfect. Yep. I wonder can. if all these little swarms we've been getting have all just been coming from this box every time they open up. Look at those. Absolutely perfect. Queen was in there, a nice sized queen. Yep. Opened the cap and away they went. Hmm. In case you didn't have a visual of what I meant when I said they were well built and solid, that's what I consider a well built solid mm -hmm. queen cell. Did you want to keep the other one? 
Don't step on it. It's right in front of your left foot, honey. Oh, thank you. you see it? Yep. As opposed to queen cups, which I usually don't remove. Yeah. Because hang I've on, noticed... I didn't get a good bit of. So that's a queen cup, right? Yeah, that's just a good queen cup. Mm-hmm. Sure, there's nothing in it. Yeah. Because I've just I've just noticed it seems like our bees construct a frame of uh, wax and they just automatically put a queen cup on it. <laughs> you know. Bizarre almost. <laughs> so just dry comb with a little patch of nectar in the middle of it. Oh. If there was a queen around. It would be prime nursery space. Nectar and nectar. Can you see the shiny? No, because the sun's not behind us now, so I can't really see the shiny. But, you know, we can take your word for it. More nectar? Just a little bit of nectar and a little bit of nectar. On. Once I remember what I said a lot of times when I was inspecting two weeks ago that it would be half nectar and half dry. Yeah. It's still the same thing. Half mm. nectar, half dry. I mean, prime nursery space for a new queen. And here we have, I don't know about your side, but on this side we've got lots and lots of resources. Yeah. Bee, bee bread packed from one side to the other, yeah. interspersed with nectar. Same here. Very nice frame. Incredible frame of uh, resources. And we barely have enough bees to defend this stuff from the wax moth. I was just thinking the same thing. Worries me a tremendous amount. I I was just thinking I don't think you should leave this this hive stacked so many boxes high. Um, and this is why I love being an all medium beekeeper. I can take this box off, put it over there, get all the bees off of it, you know, with a bee escape, and freeze these combs. And, you know, don't let the wax moths get to them. And if this hive or any other hive gets active again, they can go back on. Or you could take one of a myriad of swarms that we have caught so far, not including the two in the buckets that we have already that need mm. to go into equipment yeah. and uh, use some of these boxes to rehome them. Or use some of the frames to... Uh welcome them to their new home yeah exactly yeah hi that, there was no need for that there i think no you need. must have squished her honey no i didn't are you spraying on some more vinegar <laughs> Kill the smell, because as soon as that one stung me, three others tried to hit me. Did you have a cover for that one too? Oh yeah, that's not covered.
anybody watching this if you wonder i just keep these uh signboard covers around so that we keep bees out of the air somewhat they stay much calmer if they don't feel threatened now, isn't this interesting you mean what's going on in that little corner over there yeah yeah you may want to pull that puppy out first no, I know I'm usually pull that puppy out third. <laughs> I was gonna say usually we pull out the middle one of the middle ones, but she could no. be on that frame. Yep. I don't want to pull it out first. I don't want this rolling queen. And I got plenty of stuff over here. Wow. That's a screensaver right there. <laughs> oh, wow. That is like total bee bread. Is that beautiful? You can make a screensaver out of that. <laughs> I prefer one of capped honey, but that's just me. Right next to it, dry as a bone. Yeah. But please note, as of this moment at least, we have not seen a single hive beetle. Anywhere. Oh, we have not seen a hive beetle. You're anywhere. right. And surprise, more surprising to me at this moment is we haven't seen a wax moth. We haven't seen a what? A wax moth. Oh, anywhere. a wax they, moth. Yeah. They should be salivating over this lovely comb. We Especially since we don't seem to have enough bees. To cover all this lovely comb. Why do we have? Oh, you got honey on this side. What you got on that side? Nada. Ah, okay. Look for eggs then. This is just right to the bottom. Really? All the way across. And I'm still curious why they were so busy there. I expected to see a small high beetle or two when I popped this up and I didn't see a queen or anything like that. I thought, well, maybe they were keeping some beetles corralled, but nope. Oh, the sun came out. Yeah. No eggs. That's a pretty effect. That dark old comb with all that beautiful colored bee bread in it. Can't see it. The sun's behind you. Okay. I'll get the edge of this. That might be a better shot. Yep. Very pretty. They're doing their job. Just not a whole lot of them on the second verse, same as the first. We got Oh, yeah. Beautiful brood comb with lots of bee bread in it. I won't resist. You thought this comb was up against a wall and that was brace comb. Weird. Mm, 
now I can see a lot of you, but <laughs> look at that. Now there's a picture. Yeah. They're preparing for brood, but not a whole lot of brood in there. I think your uh, hypothesis that the small swarms are coming from this hive may be correct. Yeah, well, that's pretty well. So we ended up with some a swarmy bees, some swarmy queens, and best thing to do is change that genetics. Back on. Well, that's it. That's your little porch roof, in case people don't know what that is. Yeah. Okay. What do we got up here? Just more of the same. Huh. So this is the entrance side of the bottom box. So your brood nest is usually going to start right in this area, and in right in this area. All the way through here, we've just got lots and lots of uh, bee bread. Mm -hmm. you know? We're still putting it in the right place. So, any conclusions? This wasn't something I thought I would be doing today, but Given that we have all this lovely bee bread, I think I'm going to go into one of the hives over here that started out as a swarm. Yeah. In fact, it is, people will probably remember if they watch the videos, the swarm that was wrapped up in a sable palm. Oh, the palm, leaf, the sable swarm. Because they are so gentle and so nice and right. the queen is so productive. Yeah. So I have been encouraging her over here. And I think I might just do a newspaper merge and put her on top of here with all this bee bread and uh, see if we can't uh, encourage her to replace over here and, you know, beehive number one. Right. That's a good idea. Point. Now, while the foragers are out because it's early morning, mm -hmm. well, early, yeah, it's 1030 no. ish. Yeah. Yeah, but they'll be coming back to the bottom, and we'll have the merge uh, above that. So are you moving this box to her position? No, 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 no. I would be moving her box to this position. After? Oh, you mean? After dark, or when are you doing it? Oh, I see. No, I will do that now. And then what happens when the foragers come back from her? I will have a box sitting over there, one of these boxes sitting over there. Uh huh. They'll all come in, and then I'll just put it on top of here after nightfall. You know, some will get the memo, some will stubbornly keep going back there, and I'll probably just take one of these small hives that has nothing going on in it and set it in that position and let them get some field force and see what happens. I experiment with swarms. Okay. So are you going to do that right now then? Yep. All right. But unfortunately, it is going to make for a somewhat longer video. I'm up for it. You know what I noticed though? Some of your frames don't have an arrow on them. Mm -hmm. So they really kind of need them. In case you guys are wondering, the arrows are how we know we're putting the frames back in the same orientation. Yeah. I mean, in this case, I don't really think it makes that big a difference. No, there's these nothing are, on these them. are straight up cones. So yeah. It's fine. But the reason I don't bother at this point is things that we're, well, I mean, there's an arrow there. It's just almost gone. But if you put a mark a sharpie arrow on top of the propolis layer that's on here yeah it doesn't stay <laughs> oh <laughs> all it, right it then. doesn't it doesn't really sink in it doesn't adhere i don't do it before they get treated with propolis it's not so great
Okay, well, the next thing we need to do, I guess I should cover that. Okay, well, we need to come over here then. And see how these girls are doing. I should note that as I've been walking the dog the last two days, that the bees are all over the minimum wage stuff they're all over the false button with the false button weed they're all over the uh, uh, florida snow they're all over all of our ground weeds and they're super all over all of my bee bushes that are around the yard very heavily which means that at this micro moment in time there's no trees blooming immediately around me there's no large palm tree flowers out there's no uh, trees of different species that the bees are interested in blooming that will change again by next week undoubtedly and it's may 4th it's may 4th at this point and this is when we start getting into our roller coaster and i keep damp sugar on them if there's nothing going on they'll take it if they have anything out there, they will take it preferentially to taking the uh, uh, dry sh or the, the damp sugar. But that's just the way our summer is down here. Because while the rest of you are just getting into swarm season, while the rest of you are just getting into your blooms, it's May. Our swarm season started in January. And was heaviest January through March. It's 365 down here, but January through March is really heavy. April it starts to slow down. Well, already I see more bees in this <laughs> one box than I did in the other one. Oh, yeah. like five boxes of the other one. Um, it's probably smoking a little bit. Were I'm you gonna, going to just yeah. lift the whole thing up and put it on top of the other one? Uh, no, the well, remember the comb on this one was so torn up in the bottom box. Yeah. I gave them some nice drawn comb up top along with some frames, and they immediately moved into all of this and weren't paying a lot of attention down there. Now, they've been expanding so long that they may be paying more attention down there. I still see plenty of undrawn comb up here. <laughs> so you're going to put both of these boxes on top of that one over there. Yep. Okay. All right. I just want to see what our status is here. This is the top box that was given to them with foundation and drawn comb. I want to see how they're doing in it. And, huh. A lot more drone comb. Oh, you want to move your hand here. I'm going to spin this around so you can see it. Oh, you're looking at the bottom of this one. I'm looking at the bottom of these frames. Okay. A lot of drone comb in there, so they were, they had plans. Even though we have, you know, undrawn comb over here, there's plenty of room, but they were already starting to make some drones. Yeah. But again, look how gentle these girls are. And lots and lots of bees in here, too. All right, let's get going.
So you're spraying the newspaper with water. Yep. And the reason I'm doing it was actually evident just a moment ago, because without spraying it with some water, the breeze wants to take it away. And you're putting your little your little porch roof back on. Yeah, you can you can buy the you can buy uh, front porches for your bees for seventeen eighteen dollars. This is seventeen cents. Where? Well, at uh, Home Depot. In this what section? The roofing section, the flash little flashing section things. Ah. All you have to do it it comes as just an L shape. All you have to do is bend a little lip on it right here, slip it in like that, and you've got yourself a roof. They work perfectly especially if you get the torrential downpours that we get yeah so are you going to keep the boxes in the same order yes so the other one's going on first we should do it that way Now you all know why he calls me the supervisor. <laughs> it's a rough job. Somebody has to do it. <laughs> That's why they call me the senile old man. You're not senile, not by a long shot. I like this plan. Got to find my edges. They're hidden under the yeah. newspaper. You have, um, you could come a little, a quarter inch over on this side. Yeah. Back seems good. Yeah. This one's got nothing on it. You don't need to bother with it. I'm sorry, let's do this one first. Wow, these are some really gentle bees. Aren't they, though? I mean, there's no questioning why I wanted to get them into my permanent rotation here. This is going to come as a shock, I'm afraid, to the bees, but uh, <laughs> they're going to come back. Do you expect that there'll be any fighting because they're coming back to a hive that's not theirs? Yep. But when they come back, if they're coming back with stores, I've been told and I've read that bees will welcome other bees that come back with food. That could be true? That's usually the case, yeah. All right. I guess we're going to find that out, too. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but uh, we'll just uh, leave that box here, and then tomorrow, or after dark tonight, or maybe after dark tomorrow night, we'll just put this box on top of those two. And uh, we should have a majority, and then whatever's left over, I'll just uh, move uh, probably this Cover. You're missing way. the cover, sweetie. People asked what that was. Yeah. If, well, what these are is uh, cement mixing trays. Come in a variety of sizes. They're all a great fit for a eight frame hive, but you'll have to look a little harder to make sure you get one that'll fit a 10 frame hive. Particularly, you're not measuring here to here before you go to Home Depot. You're measuring here to here, unless you use strictly uh, uh, trans, you know, transit foot covers. Migratory Trans covers. Transport Migra cover? Migratory covers. Oh, migratory. Yeah. yeah. If you use migratory covers, then this is your measurement. But if you use these and you need to measure that before you measure this, this is on the tiny side. 
This is like the smallest one I have. Most of them are bigger, but they all work. Gives you a nice dead air space up here, overlaps everything, and uh, keeps the rain, keeps the rain off. off and protects the equipment. And then it, but the mostly I do it for the heat because it gives me a nice big dead air space above everything. Oh. Well, we still have an open hive over here. Yes, we do. We have a very gentle open hive over here. Yeah. So. Okay. moment. Where did I put my other... Uh, what are you looking for? I'm just looking for the feeder shim. Even the feeder else. shim. Good question. <laughs> I don't see it. Oh, it's here. oh, here it is. It was just behind this box. Still very calm. Yeah. You didn't even smoke these girls. Nope. And nobody's really in the air. Nope. They're just hanging out. These are some wonderfully chill bees. Yeah. Okay, well, there's going to be some confusion. Yeah. You can see. Well. So what's the... Oh, yeah, mixing tray. You used that one. <laughs> um, I didn't buy any of these. Oh, these came where? Out of the trash. Oh. That's why you cruise bulk pickup. <laughs> People get one of these. They put in a new... A mailbox or whatever and then they chuck it and there you go there you go so hive number one is now what used to be the palm tree, the palm swarm. tree swarm and uh yeah if you're playing the home game good luck because <laughs> <laughs> we have trouble remembering and uh then the bottom box is the original hive one but there's very few bees in there now You've got bees in that box over there. What are you going to do with them? Well, I'm going to put them over there with the uh, two honey supers. You're going to use the bee escape on them? Uh-huh. And just let them get out? Yeah. And then those frames are going in, in the, the freezer. freezer? Okay. Yeah. All right. For the time being. So is that a wrap? Yeah, that's a wrap. Uh Hardly even a need to let you know how this works out because this should work out just fine. And I'm very happy to get these wonderfully gentle bees. I mean, this was a wild colony in a palm tree that, if you've seen the video, you know, it well, snapped off, link, landed on the ground. Link, we link can the video link to, to the this video. just to show you the bees, yes. how gentle these bees are. I mean, they could not have been more abused. And well, yet they're so gentle. They had a hard start yeah. to this colony. So. But hopefully this will all work out well now. Yep. All right, that's it. Uh, this has been Rich. This has been South Florida Beekeeping with Rich. Be sure to like and subscribe, particularly hit that like button, because the more you hit the like button, the more YouTube will show my videos to more beekeepers. And, you know, there's a lot of good information here that you can find out if you look at the old the back catalog. Talk to you guys later. Have a great day.